Hey y'all, this video is a follow-up to my last video, uh, the importing a DXF file into vCarve Pro and then using that file to set up toolpaths and save G-code. Um, I had a few questions and I didn't touch on a couple of subjects that I really should have, but I left them out due to time constraints, basically. So I'm going to address those issues in this video and answer a couple of questions. So stick around. Okay, another thing that I got questions on that um, I just didn't talk about due to time constraints was in the job setup uh, when we first created the new file. And we came in here and we set the width in X and we set the height in Y. Then I set the thickness in Z. But I did not even discuss my Z0 position. And this can be a controversial controversial topic for some people. Um, basically, even on the Vectric website, there they have a disclaimer in talking about the Z0 origin, and that disclaimer says that this city setting is very much dependent on how your CNC and control software work so you may be limited to only working with one of these two choices. If you have questions regarding your machine you should contact the machine's manufacturer or distributor. Some CNC's use a proprietary software that requires you to set your Z0 origin at the top surface of the material. They don't even give you this option. Now you can open VCAR Pro and you can choose either one, but you're going to have problems if your machine requires you to set your Z0 at the top and you set it at the bottom. And those problems could be very expensive. You could damage, you certainly damage material, possibly damage a bit, and uh, at the extreme, you could damage the machine. So no matter what, follow your manufacturer's suggestions and recommendations. Don't let me or anybody else try to talk you into doing something that contradicts or countermands their instructions. If they say set your Z0 origin at the top of the surface of the material, then do just that and that should be the end of the subject. If your machine allows you to choose between zeroing at the top of the material or on the bottom of the material or also at the top of the work table or spoil board, whichever, then you have a couple of choices to make. Um, basically, any kind of a tool path that you're going to be running uh, that's sensitive to the depth of the cut like a V carving or uh, doing 3D carving in, uh, in, in a dished out area or something like that, your uh, material, your Z0 origin should be at the top of your material because it doesn't really matter how much material is left over after you cut. The important part is the distance from the surface and how deep it cuts in. If on the other hand you're cut, making a cut um, you are surface planing uh, a board down to, it's sitting about three quarters of an inch now and you want to surface plane that down to um, five eighths or a half inch. You would set your Z0 to the bottom of the material so that when you run those machining operations it reduces this thickness no matter what it is down to a half of an inch. If you're also if you're cutting a dado for the sake of argument into a piece of material and it's not as important how how deep the dado is what's important is that you leave a certain amount of material down here at the bottom that's also when you would set your Z0 to the bottom overall however I have found that I haven't come across a situation yet where I needed to change this or worry about it. I set my Z0 to the top of the material and I drive on, which is why I was comfortable in not even addressing this in the first video. 
Um, another thing to consider is your experience with your machine. If you are setting your Z0 now and you're getting good results, whether it be from the bottom or from the top, if you're setting your Z0 and you're getting good results, you're getting the result you want, then keep using that setting. If you're comfortable with it and it's working for you, then there's no need to change yeah. it. The XY datum position I use is the bottom left. Now I could just as easily use the center. And if I'm honest, there are cases where I have set the XY datum in the center because that gives me a good zero zero starting point right in the middle of my material if I want to draw vectors. If I need to put a half inch diameter circle right here in the center, I can anchor it at zero zero and go from there. If I want to draw something here in, in the center and then move it three inches over, I can start it at zero, zero and then move it three inches over. Now, this is, you're able to switch this back and forth however you want to do this. There have been times where I have drawn out an entire pattern with my Z, uh, excuse me, with my XY datum in the center then before I calculate my toolpath, I'll come back over here and switch it to XY. So I'm using this XY datum position as guidelines for drawing out my vectors, then changing it over to the bottom left when it comes time to generate the toolpaths and get ready to cut. So that's entirely up to you. Again, if you have a system that works well for you, stick with it. There's no reason to change it just for the sake of change. The best option in this case is the one that works for you and the one you're comfortable using. Units, again, I work in inches. Uh, design scaling, that's another topic for another video because chapters and chapters can be written about this. Uh, my modeling resolution, I leave set to standard. I don't need high definition graphics for this. I'm um, not broadcasting this um, live, so the graphics that I get on my simulation are, are just fine. Set it standard. Your mileage may vary. And as far as appearance is concerned, you know, I picked Canadian maple for this I could just as easily have picked birch it really doesn't matter to me then I'll accept these settings here when it comes time to select the vectors to group the software will take into account the order in which you select each of these vectors. So in this case, with our zero point over here in this corner, we want it to be as convenient as possible to run as quickly as possible. So if we come up to this circle right here and select it, then come up to this one, this one, then down here to these two, that order that I just selected these in and I have now grouped them that's the order the bits gonna actually run those toolpaths so it'll start here at zero zero move up then cut this one first then this one then move across cut this one come down here and then here so let's take a look at that and calculate it and we'll do a pocket toolpath we're cutting full depth using a quarter inch end mill. Six passes for this demonstration, that's fine. Normally I would go more. We'll clear it, offset. We're going to ramp in over the distance of one inch. And I'll name this pocket one so we can see. Calculate. And now, if we look at the red line here, we can see that that's exactly the tool, the path that the bit is going to take and drill these holes in that order. Let me slow down my preview here, and we can take a look. So that's something to take into consideration when you're planning out your job. 
and it did. It took the path in uh, in the order that we grouped them in. Let me reset here, close, and we'll go back over and ungroup these so that they're each separate. And now I'll go ahead and group them in another way using this select and we'll grab these here, hold down shift, grab these here, group them, go over here and start a new pocket using the exact same settings, ramp in the plunge moves, we'll call that pocket 2 and you see the difference. It's going to start over in this corner, run all the way over here and do this one first. We'll preview that toolpath. Do this one first, then come down take care of these two, then go all the way back over and do that there. That's not very efficient use of your time or the machine's time. So it's something to consider when you're planning out a job. Something that I get asked quite often is, what's the difference between joining and grouping? Well, in a nutshell, joining is when you take separate line or line segments and you connect these together to form one entity or one set of vectors. So you would select all of these vector, all of these separate lines and line segments come over here and click the join open vectors icon and you see right now we have no closed vectors, seven open vectors and after we join them we'll have one closed vectors and no open vectors. Now I've also had a question on what this tolerance is. The tolerance is the distance between one line segment and another line segment. And you can see this is set pretty, you know, we're looking at uh, four ten thousandths of an inch, meaning that it's going to search for uh, vectors that are within four ten thousandths of an inch of one another here and join those. If we set that tolerance to a lower number it may exclude a couple of line segments that we want joined up into one. So generally speaking that's the factory default number I leave it alone. So what we're doing on this when I click join is we're taking all of those separate line segments and we're joining them into one vector and making this one solid line. Okay? Grouping is when we take several other vectors that are already joined. These are single solid vectors, solid circles, and we're grouping them so that the machine operation we want to program, in this case a pocket, to drill the holes all the way through the material so that we can create one toolpath that will have VCarve Pro program that toolpath to cut all of these in one operation. We've got five different holes here to be drilled. If I group them all together I only have to make one toolpath. I don't have to make five separate toolpaths. So the easiest way to do that is to come along and group all these together selecting each one, holding down shift as I click, click on each one. Come over here to group selected objects and now they are one group. Anything that I apply now will be applied to everything. You see they're all selected now. Now this means when I say anything I apply to this group applies to all of them, that is not just restricted to the tool paths. If I come along and I select this group and I hit rotate selected objects by 90 degrees, it's going to rotate 
all of them. See what I mean? So anything that happens, now I'm holding down control, hitting Z to undo that. Anything that I do to one does it to the entire group. If, for the sake of argument, I need to change the size of this circle here, I'll select the group, come back over here, and hit ungroup objects back onto their original layers, and they're now, once again, separate vectors. So I can come in and resize this circle, for example, and say do so, and now that circle size has been changed. Then I can come back, select this one, oops, select that one, hold down shift, select this one, select this one, select this one, select this one, once again in the order that I want them to machine in, and group. Something that I forgot to add in the original video was that the need to save this file. Now, in the demo video that I did before, we joined this and we grouped the holes and then we checked this toolpath, checked this vector to make sure it was okay before we generated our toolpaths. We generated our toolpaths and got all that set and ready to go, then we saved our G-code. The, saving the G-code is great. Those are the instructions to the CNC machine. But we also have to save this file. And we do that up here under the File menu. Just the same as you would save any other file in a word processor or an imaging program or uh, a CAD program. You still have to save this file. If we just save the G-code and then don't save this file, the minute we close this, we've lost everything we've done. It's like this never even existed. So if you, whether you plan on reusing this or not, you may want to revisit it later on. Before you close out of this program, come on over and save this in the folder that you want to save it in. Otherwise, all of this just disappears. Now I can tell that I haven't saved this because the title is still new. And um, so I need to save this before I lose everything. So just a real quick pointer. It's a two-step process. There's two separate things you have to save. The G-code and the file itself. Something else that I didn't get into simply for the constraints of time was up here in the material setup. Now when we first click over after making sure all of our vectors are grouped and joined and everything is the way we want it, we click over here to the toolpaths tab and you see this area up here it says material setup. And if we click the set button here, up in this portion what we're getting is a recap of uh, a summary of what we set up in the job setup over here when we first started the new file. Again, we're not using an offset. Our material is zeroed to, our Z is zero to the top of the material. The thickness is set. Our XY datum is set. The model position in the material on a 2D cut like this where we're just cutting the full depth of the material, cutting a part out of some stock, uh, the gap above the model should be checked and zero should be that, that gap. Basically when you start getting into full 3D carvings uh, you'll start to use this more. Uh, it's basically setting where you're going to start cutting the actual model uh, if you are going to cut down into the material before you actually start cutting the 3D toolpath, this is where you'll set that. So for purposes of this discussion, gap above model 0.0, .0 is uh, 
is the setting that I use. Now when we get down here to rapid Z gaps above material you see I have mine set up at a half inch. This is a clearance between the top of your workpiece and the bottom of the bit. So when the machine is cutting a tool path it finishes for the sake of argument this hole here and lifts up out of the hole and moves over here to start cutting this it will lift up in my case here one half inch above the material surface and then move over here at its rapid maximum rate then start cutting this tool path. Now depending upon how you uh, attach your workpiece, your material to your spoil board or your work table uh, you may need to adjust this. If you use clamps to hold the material down uh, you'll need to make sure that this measurement will lift the bit high enough to clear those clamps. Uh, now personally I use screws or the old um, masking tape with uh, crazy glue uh, method of mounting so I don't have anything sticking up here that I could possibly run my bit into so I I can go a half inch above the material and be safe but if you're gonna clamp your material down especially if you're getting close to any of these areas here you really need to make sure that your bit will lift up that half inch and get out of the way uh, of any clamps or bolts or nuts and in my case a half inch is just fine. The plunge Z you notice mine's set at a quarter of an inch and what this means is when for example this hole when the uh, bit is finished cutting this hole here it's going to lift up and then move over here at its rapids then it's going to plunge down a quarter of an inch at its rapid rate then slow down to the plunge rate that I have set up for that bit. So I don't have to sit there and wait for it to start moving down at that plunge rate. It can go ahead and move down to within a quarter of an inch of the material surface at, its, at the rapid rate and then slow down to the plunge rate that I have set for this tool path. So this is the clearance between the bit and the material when it's moving from one tool path to another and this is the um, uh, amount of clearance the bit can actually plunge down toward the material surface at the rapid rate. Now this is an option in VCarve Pro and Aspire. I do not know if it's an option in VCarve Desktop or Cut 2D. I'm really not sure. The home start position here I have set it 0, 0 for X, Y because I want the bit to start here when I start up these tool paths. I also want it to start a half inch above the material. Now if I were if I had a tool change for the sake of argument and I was cutting this with one bit with a quarter inch bit then I needed to do a tool change to cut this with an eighth inch bit because there's a tool change involved uh, I would output this as one G code file then this is another G code file using zero zero with a half inch means that once this bit is finished cutting this tool path here it's going to lift up a half inch above the material and return to zero zero where I can do my tool change there. Then I will reset my Z and move on to the next tool path. Now if these tool paths all use the same bit which they do in this case and I don't have a tool change I can output all three of these tool paths to the same file when I first start the machine cutting it'll lift up the half inch wrap it over here plunge down to a quarter of an inch away from the surface then slow down to the plunge rate I have set for this tool path 
cut this hole, pick up, move over to this one. When it gets finished with this last hole, it'll lift up to a half inch above the material surface, stop for a second, load the next tool path, then proceed over here to start cutting this one. It doesn't return to zero, it just proceeds to the next tool path, starts it. Likewise, when this is finished, the bit will come up out of the material the half inch, the, the machine will stop for a second while the controller software loads the next tool path and it moves to the starting point and starts cutting this tool path. So that's what these are, are for. You set your home start position which is usually the your XY0 down here and your position above the spoil board or above the work surface, the material surface for your rapids and your tool change. You can set this higher. Uh, if you have the Z capacity you could set that to an inch and a half and that will lift that bit an inch and a half above your work surface so you can better get to it to do the tool change. I find that I'm just fine with a half inch between the tip of the bit and the work surface so I leave it set here. That's all these mean. And again, I didn't get into this for the constraints of time. Generally speaking, when you're talking about cutting 2D parts like this, once you have this all set up like this, you have your rapid Z1 and Z2, and you have your home start position, and you accept that, generally speaking, it's a set it and forget it type of thing. About the only time I ever get into my material setup is if I'm going to do a 3D cut because there may be something in here I need to look at in the model position area. But other than that, if I'm just cutting out 2D parts, I don't even go into this because it's not necessary. I know it's set up and I can tell that by looking right here. My Z1 is the half inch. My work material, my work piece is three quarters of an inch thick. My XY datum is zero, zero over here. My home is set for X0, Y0, Z at a half inch. I can see that at a glance and if something's not right, then I'll go in and change it. But other than that, I leave it alone. So I hope you found something useful in this video. Uh, if I didn't get to your question, or if you have another question, uh, please feel free to leave it down below in the comment section. And if you got anything at all out of this video, how about leaving me a thumbs up down there as well? It really does make a difference. So I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be notified the next time I put up a video. So until next time, thank you again for watching. Y'all take care.